Okay, so we're back again to do some more cooking. Um, what I've decided to do today, um, just to make this week a little bit more fun, in I think we probably need it now in our second week of isolation. Um, so I thought you might like to make some cupcakes. Um, I have found a lovely Mary Berry recipe, um, which has some nice fun toppings on it. So that's what we're gonna aim to do. Um, I'm gonna show you how to make the cakes. We'll bake the cakes, we'll let them cool, and then I'll show you some um, little things that we can do to top them different icing methods and things like that. As before, made sure my hair's tied back so that's out of the way, and I've washed my hands, um, and you'll notice I've also removed all my jewelry, so nice and clean to start. Um, so you know the ingredients, I have labeled them nice and clearly for you, so hopefully, um, you can get a nice good shot of that Okay, so the ingredients that we have for this recipe we will need uh, Three tablespoons of milk a tablespoon looks like this. It's like your dessert spoon We will need two eggs 150 grams of sugar caster sugar preferably because it's lighter in a cake, but not a priority um, of 150 grams of self raisin flour so um, essentially that will rise itself self raisin flour and 100 grams of butter and um, you'll notice I also have some chocolate chips and I'm going to add those in a bit later okay so to start we need to put all of our ingredients in together what we're going to do though first of all is mix our two eggs in the jug all right, so take both of your eggs, crack them on the edge of the jug and place them into the bottom. doesn't matter if they break. And there's our second egg. We will need to beat these with a fork, just really, shouldn't I? Right, so um, break up our eggs. We're whisking those in the jug. So we've got a nice um, yellow mixture. To that, we then add our three tablespoons of milk. So over the top of the jug, just add one, two, three. And this is all the liquid we're gonna add to this recipe. Okay, so we do need to be conscious of that. Okay, whisking that milk, so that's mixed up as well. And then I've got that ready to go into my recipe. Now, the next ingredients. I don't usually sieve flour, but um, the advice is it adds more um, air into your cake, so I'm going to try it this time. If you have a sieve, you can. If not, just sprinkle it into the bowl. Okay, so I'm just gonna place my flour into my sieve and gently put that into my bowl. If I change over my hands, you'll be able to see. There we go. I'm trying to get a slightly better angle so you guys can see what I'm doing. That was a bit of feedback I got on the last video, so hopefully this is slightly clearer. All right, so I have my flour in the bowl. Um, it is easier to mix this if you've got a soft butter. So um, we've always got spreadable butter, so I've just put soft butter in here. If you've left it out on the side for a little bit, that will make it even softer. So you can see mine's more like cream than it is butter at the moment. That does make life a little bit easier. I've got to mix all of this together. Okay, so butter, flour, self-raising flour, and then um, sugar in onto that as well. Um, you might want to mix this up a little bit to start off with, just to break up the butter around in your mix. So hopefully you can see that. And the butter is just breaking through all the flour and mixing all of that up. And then add in your liquid. Okay. Now, this is what we call an all-in-one cake mix, okay? So essentially, I've got all the ingredients in together now, and I'm just going to give them a really good mixing to get them all together okay and you do want to really beat this mix you want to make sure there's no flour left out and you want to make sure there's no lumps in it because if you have lumps in it 
they're going to be the lumps of flour that you'll have in your cakes at the end and you don't want those lumpy bits in your cakes at the end. Okay, so we're mixing it round till we've got a nice smooth paste. And hopefully that's nice and clear and you can see how clear and how smooth that is. Okay, a couple of little air bubbles in there, so I'm just going to give it a last little stir just to make sure they're not lumps and they are air bubbles. Um, make sure you get around all those edges because it's really easy to miss the flour inside and then it goes in right at the last minute. So you can see that's my cake mix. This is a really nice, easy recipe to do. Okay, and then we have um, muffin cases. Okay, and they are in a muffin tray. If you don't have a muffin tray, you can use a cake tray and cake cases. You will probably get slightly more. Okay, now to put these into those, I'm actually going to use a smaller spoon than this. So using the tablespoon that I use for my milk makes it slightly easier to spoon into each of those cases. Now I'm just going to do one spoonful into each because they will rise. And actually if they only rise up to the top of the edge of the casing, it can almost be easier because you'll have a flatter top to do your... you're just going to stick with those eight and make them larger cakes rather than trying to do 12. It's often the way the recipe is always sent to fry slightly. Oh, let's get every last bit. Uh, remember as much fun as it is to lick the bowl when you finish. This is a cake mix that has two raw eggs in it at the moment, so probably not the safest idea, um, especially while we should be looking after our immune systems, okay? Now this is a fun bit that I said, that I would add the slight little difference that I'm going to add to my cakes, okay? So hopefully you can see those there. And bring it slightly closer, so you can actually see what I'm going to do now. Okay, so because um, chocolate chips are quite heavy, they tend to fall to the bottom of the mixture if you mix them in. So dropping them in the top will mean that they melt into your cake, but they should slowly sink as well. If they don't slowly sink, there's nothing to stop you going round with a spoon or fork and just tucking them in slightly so that they go into your mixture. But because they are quite heavy when they go into a cake mixture, they do have a tendency to sink right to the bottom of your cake mixture when you've put it in. Okay, so I can go around now with my spoon and I can just mix them in very slightly. And that means you've got a nice load of chocolate chips. You could even go around and add some more, I suppose, if you wanted to. In, but you might want to break them down a bit and mix them actually in with your mixture then before you put them in. But this just makes a normal cupcake a little bit more interesting. I'm terrible for this, I'm always experimenting with a recipe. I always like to try and change it just slightly. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. Pretty sure this one should have done it before. Right, I'm just going to add one or two more, because while they rise, they will fall. Oh, missed it. There we go. See, so my cupcakes ready to go into the oven. Right, so using your oven mitt to make sure you don't burn your hands when it goes into the oven, you want to make sure they go into um, the middle of the oven. Okay. And your oven needs to be at 180 or gas mark four, depending on whether you have electric or gas. 
and you're placing them in for 20 minutes, okay? It's 20 to 25 minutes, so you might want to check um, and to check your cakes when they come out. Let's leave them for 20 minutes. Right, so they've been in now for 20 minutes, so I'm gonna take them out and check them and see if they're okay. And they look good, they've risen well, and you can see they're all nice and high. So the way I'm gonna check them is I'm just gonna press the top. So you can see that one is actually springing back quite nice and firmly. So is that one and that one. So I'm reasonably happy that they are done. However, if I wanted to check with a knife, I can do. So I'm just gonna pop a knife straight down the middle of that one and bring it out. And you can see my knife is totally clean, no cake mix on it. Okay, so that was 20 minutes and they've all done well and you can see the chocolate chips are coming through too. I'm now going to take them out of the casing and leave them to cool probably for about an hour before I decorate them otherwise the icing will just roll off them. Okay so they are going to be left on the side to cool for about an hour. I'll take them out of the tin so that the tin doesn't keep them too hot. Okay so you can now see my cakes have been sat on the side cooling off um, and I'm going to make some um, icing, butter icing, to go on the top of them. The butter icing is nice because it's quite thick and it gives you a peak. Um, I've got some soft butter in my bowl. Literally, it is just a tablespoon of butter. That's all I've got in there. doesn't need a lot with the icing sugar. You'll be surprised how much icing sugar that will take. Um, I'm then going to um, put in a teaspoon. So a teaspoon is the size of a spoon that you stir your tea with. Okay, so I'm going to put a teaspoon of vanilla essence um, in there. Okay, so that will add a little bit of flavour. And then I'm going to stir it with a fork because that will break into the butter as I'm trying to mix with the icing sugar. Now you just keep adding icing sugar until you've got it to the consistency you want it to be. Okay, it does take quite a lot of icing sugar to one little bit of butter. So you can see there, what I've done is I've just caused a mountain of icing sugar over the top, all right, and I've just covered it. If you do too much at once, it'd be too difficult to mix. And if you just use the fork then to stab into the icing sugar, icing sugar is so light and fluffy, you will find it starts to go everywhere. This is the one time you really probably would want a ink print on. Um, so be prepared to tidy up afterwards if you're anything like me. If you have an electric whisk, this is much better of an electric whisk, much more efficient. Um, but this way is just as good. You can see how it's sort of slowly picking it up, but also is, as it is so sort of dicey, uh, dusty as a sugar, it just sort of stays around the edge of the bowl. So you're trying to get it to mix in where you can. And this still at the moment looks more like cake mix. It's still quite runny and you can see as I run the fork for it, it's sort of moulding itself back together and you don't want it doing that. You want it to peak and sort of act almost like it's almost solid. So I'm going to add some more icing sugar into there. You see again, covering up all of my mixture. There you go. At worst comes the worst, if you put too much icing sugar in, you can always add a tiny bit more butter. But you can see that small spoonful of butter is actually still going to grab up all this icing sugar. I might still need to add some more. So it is one of those things that's a gradual process. Right, you can also see it's starting to thicken slightly now. So I'm starting to get slight peaks, but they're still moulding together. So I can still put in more icing sugar. Uh, this is the same if you make um, normal icing with icing sugar and you just add water to it. What you want to do is you start with a lot of icing sugar and you literally just add a teaspoon of water at a time. It would probably take four or five teaspoons to get it to start. Or you can see I've probably been a little bit generous with that amount of icing sugar. Now starting to get a bit of a cloud. Hope you can still see what's going on. Uh, but you can see now this is much stiffer and firmer as a consistency. 
Okay, so I'm just going to move it round the bowl now so I can get some of the rest of the icing sugar. And you should be able to see now how much firmer that's become. All right, it's turning almost into a dough. Okay, and you can see there, I'm starting to get quite nice peaks from it. And that's what we're after. Okay, so you can see it sort of peaks up and it's not actually sort of melting back together anymore. So that consistency of the butter to just sort of melt isn't happening anymore. So that's what we're after. You could still add a little bit more icing sugar to that if you wanted to. What I'm going to do, however, is I'm going to separate it. I'm going to keep half as plain. And I'm going to keep the other half. So I've probably got enough there for one, maybe two cakes. And then with the other half, I'm going to make it chocolate. So I'm going to add in a little bit of cocoa powder. Okay. There we go. This one's quite a dark to, to, to cocoa powder, so it is actually quite strong. There we go. Okay, so I'm just going to mix that in the same as I did the icing sugar to get my chocolate icing. Okay, so you can see how that's mixing together. Same thing after those peaks. I want it to look almost like now a sort of chocolate dough as such. Okay, so I hope you can see those nice peaks. Everybody likes chocolate icing. Okay. So that's how we make butter icing. Basically butter and icing sugar. We have a little bit of vanilla essence. Right, okay, welcome back. Um, we have been decorating some cakes, as you can see. Da, 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 da. Um, so we have a little hedgehog, some little chickens, um, an Easter nest, a nice little flower, another sort of Easter nest. So a couple of things going on there that you could also experiment with yourselves. So I'm going to show you some tricks for decorating and give you um, a couple of top tips. Okay. So we have available for decorating um, the uh, normal icing that I made, which is just the butter, icing, sugar, vanilla essence. And then the chocolate icing, you can see which was the favorite with my family because it's the one with the most leftover, the least leftover. Um, we have the leftover chocolate chips, so we can use those. We've got some chocolate um, mini eggs as we're coming up to Easter and the mixed um, chocolate buttons. Now another trick that we have is just using chocolate and I'll show you that one in a minute as well. First top tip is to have a cup of boiling water and place your tool for decorating into the boiling water. That means that your icing um, won't stick to your tool and will make life slightly easier. Um, we always all agreed that actually the knife was easiest to spread with. So I'm going to show you with the knife to start off with. So the easiest thing to do is to use the edge of your paper bit to help you to decorate. Um, I'm going to start off um, by just doing a little nest on the top of this one. So I'm going to keep this one in the white. Okay, so nice big dollop as you can see. <laughs> and just spread it around on the top. You can see I'm just using the edge of the casing to help me to place that around the edge there. Always pulling it over itself. This one, believe it or not, was I put this icing in the fridge for a while and it has actually made it slightly easier to use. So that would probably be my other recommendation. So two top tips there. One top tip, put your icing in the fridge because it just makes it slightly firmer and better to use. And the other is to use hot water for your utensils and that does mean as well that I can now place that in there and that will clean off that utensil before I use it for the chocolate one. So that's my icing and you can see nice thick layer on the top there so nice and tasty um, and I'm actually going to do it as an Easter nest so to do that 
I'm going to use some chocolate shavings. So I told you I'd show you this little trick. So using the edge of the chocolate bar, I've used this edge already. So I'm actually going to go to the flat edge to show you because it's a little bit easier on the, the original edge. And you can just use the peeler. So this is a normal potato peeler. And you can see it's not terribly accurate in aim. But this is why I've got it on a plate so that I can take those little bits up and add them on top afterwards. If your chocolate's got a little bit warm as well, it does peel off slightly better then too. Okay, I'm going to turn it around a little bit. See if I can get a few more shavings on these sides. The bits that fall off, I'm just going to gather those up and pop them onto the top afterwards because it is not the best target in the world. There we go. I think I've probably got enough in the plate as well to help there. Okay. Da, da, da. Right, so there's another tip for you. Have a plate to capture your mess because you can still use it afterwards. It's a bit like doing glitter. There we go. All right, so that creates the roughness of my sort of Easter nest. And I go try and pop. And because the icing is quite thick, it will actually help to hold them in place. But as this one's quite tall, there's a chance it might still drop off. So I'm gonna um, use some chocolate buttons. Ooh. There we go. So it looks slightly like a flower. And you've got Easter eggs on top. So that's one. Just gonna wrap my hands off a little bit. Now, I'm now gonna show you how to do um, my hedgehog one, which is this one here, just because I thought that was a bit cute. Um, so all you need to do is grab your chocolate icing. Now for this one, I want those lines of the hedgehog to go through. So I've also got a fork. And I'm just going to use that fork to drag the icing over in that direction. So I've got a front to my hedgehog and a back to my hedgehog. I'm running out of chocolate chocolate buttons. I've only got white chocolate ones left so it's going to be a white chocolate hedgehog. And you can see I'm actually using the whole chocolate button and stabbing it in to make the spikes of the hedgehog. There we go. Any of you fans of the Sonic movie making my own Sonic the Hedgehog? I've not seen it yet. And just put in one little one Facing frontwards is my nose, and then placing one facing backwards is my flat eye, and the other one is my flat eye. So, porcupine, hedgehog, I don't know, your own interpretation. And there we go. Hope you enjoyed, hope you make your own. Remember to post your own cakes. Enjoy!